Hi, it's Doug here. Uh, welcome to Stock Story. Uh, my last video I talked about Bank of Montreal uh, bundling mortgages. Um, that plus Home Capital Group, there's just too many things that remind me of when I watched the movie The Big Short and the whole American subprime thing. Uh, I've gotten really nervous and uh, I had three Canadian banks in my accounts and I've sold them all. And uh, in this video, I just want to go over what I did, uh, the reasons why I did it. And I actually had owned uh, Home Capital Group before as well. Uh, I did sell it quite a while back when I'd heard that it was a, a short target of, of uh, an ex Lehman employee that was famous for his shorts. But the biggest reason was because uh, it sounded like they're the ones taking on the riskiest of the mortgages. So I'm not 100% sure about the Canadian banks. Anyways, uh, give this a watch and uh, hope to see your comments and everything in the end. Thanks. So let's talk about why I, I did uh, sell my Canadian bank stocks and also Home Capital Group a while back. Uh, so I'm going to give the reasons here. Uh, before we get started, though, I just want to remind you that Stock Story is for education and entertainment. It's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, please do your own due diligence before investing. You may get some ideas here. I'm a do-it-yourself investor. Uh, this is a great chance to see what I'm doing and see if it works or doesn't work and that sort of thing. Okay, this is one of the number one reasons here that I, I don't, uh, or one of the things that, that really impacted me, actually a little while back, and actually this is from uh, first quarter of 2016, but if you take a look at the, the different uh, countries here, um, you can see that um, Canada, uh, Canadian households owe... 97.9% uh, .9 debt to the actual GDP that uh, Canada has. Uh, that That's higher than the UK, higher than the US, Japan, France, Germany, and Italy. Um, this tells me that somebody's lending money out to people and, and, and they're extended based on what's being produced as far as wages and goods and services in the economy. Also, another way of looking at it, um, Vancouver's medium income, when you look at a place like Vancouver and Toronto, uh, is taking from the medium income to buy a, a, a two-story house or even a bungalow. It's over 80% of the income, uh, average medium in, or the medium income. And in Toronto, it's uh, mid-60s. Uh, so that's really high. So I, I know somebody's lending uh, to some, some some folks who may be extended to be able to do this. This is from 2012. Uh, I believe that these numbers are actually higher now. Going forward, uh, when you take a look at, at this is from uh, 2015 in the third quarter, you can see Vancouver's number three in the uh, relationship of uh, uh, medium house price median house price to median income. And so uh, I think at this time it was probably 11 or 12. Somebody said it even got up to 14 recently. It was probably pared back a little bit. But the, but the issue is, is uh, places like New York are six. And actually in reality, if, if a third of your income is supposed to go to paying for your house, you would think it'd be like three or four times. So this is extremely high. So once again, uh, there's, there's a fair amount of stress on uh, the Canadian economy there. And next thing that comes out is, is I did hear back in 2016 that uh, uh, there were people, I, I heard particularly a guy who was famous for shorting, um, uh, that used to work for Lehman's Brothers, was shorting the Canadian housing market and Home Capital Group was actually his choice. And when I look back on the amount of debt that's in Canada and that, uh, I'm not sure if our big banks are also taking high risk, but uh, somebody's lending out. And so it seemed like Home Capital Group, and that was the group he was, and that's the company he was going to uh, short or, or was shorting. Uh, maybe the one that's uh, some of those uh, secondary lenders, or maybe the ones that are taking on additional uh, in 
I know lending risks and stuff like that. As a result, I got rid of my home capital group because uh, I did I did have worries about the amount of debt to housing and and the relationship between incomes and price, and thought that maybe it wasn't a great idea to have home capital group, even though their fundamentals look great. Uh, moving right ahead, uh, more recently, uh, Toronto Dominion got slapped on the hand, and then we heard uh, in this headline here from CBC, uh, it says that uh, we're all doing it, that all five banks have employees who say that they're under pressure to sell uh, sell things to, to customers to uh, make certain amounts of revenue and, and returns for the bank, uh, even if it might not be in the best interest of the customer. This is a bit of a red flag for me because I, I'm worried that maybe uh, maybe the, the, these firms don't actually have their customers' best interest in mind, which brings on to the next thing is Bank of Montreal now is uh, bundling uninsured mortgages uh, and selling them as, as a, a mortgage-backed security to their clients. Uh, this is similar to what was in the U.S. They had uh, bundled mortgages. Now, I'm not going to say that Bank of Montreal necessarily has bad mortgages in there, but what happened was with all those bundled mortgages, more and more uh, risky mortgages were being put in underneath those and, and making the risk of the overall security there, even though it was being rank, rated as AAA. My issue is these things all sound very familiar with the United States housing markets uh, crash. And so it does concern me and does worry me. So because of that, um, here's uh, Bank of Nova Scotia. I actually held Toronto Dominion, Bank of Nova Scotia in, a, in a, uh, one of my family members' accounts. I also had Royal Bank. Um, so I'm just showing uh, Bank of Nova Scotia here and then Home Capital Group after this just to show um, the other thing was the banks had run up quite a ways. And you can see here uh, in 2015, in this area here, uh, I had accumulated these little green boxes or areas where I had accumulated stock in Bank of Nova Scotia and also had for uh, the, the other banks as well um, as a went up i took profits around the 70 dollar mark uh and then when we got to this area here oops i've gone i'm gonna get that back there we go um when you get up to the top area up here uh, i sold some off for profit and i held some on the downside and then after seeing these different news stories and uh things i decided to exit completely out of all the financials until i had a chance to one, for them to settle down because it looked like they were turning on the chart and also to uh, see if more news comes in that helps uh, reassure me that uh, we're not sitting on a, on a house of cards type thing. Um, the same thing I did with Home Capital Group, uh, only this one, I actually probably didn't make money on it. Hopefully I broke even, but somewhere, somewhere around there. You can see I entered in this area. And then uh, in 2016, I heard about the shorting, uh, was looking at some of the, the facts about uh, debt and income to, to housing prices and decided that this just wasn't a stock that I wanted to be in. So that's sort of the reason. Um, I, I know, you know, some people believe that housing prices go up forever and maybe they do. And if that's the case, it makes mortgages less risky because the underlying asset uh, is greater than the mortgage. And that then that makes it a comfortable situation for the bank and also for the person. However, if for some reason prices start to come down, then I'll, then eventually the, the mortgage may be some of the mortgages may be worth more than the actual asset. Um, for all the slides, I'll, I will put the um, links to, to those particular articles uh, or places where the charts are. I'll also uh, leave you with a, uh, a link to uh, About Me and, and the Area and Stock Stories uh, blog. Um, so anyways, uh, that's, uh, that's really why I'm, I'm a little nervous about financials. So there you have it. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just a little cautious. I don't know for 100% for sure that Canada's in the same situations that the Americans were in, but uh, I'm going to 
be careful. And so that's what I'm doing. Uh, love to see your comments. Uh, you know, if you own a home, I'm hoping all the best for you. Uh, I'm just worried about some of the possible lending that uh, banks or uh, special lending houses may have done. Anyways, have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.